at the outset, I would like to thank Colonel Vijay Chadda, Chairman School Managing Committee, Principal Dr. Dalta, my teacher, Mrs. Jaya Kurana, Headmasters, the members of faculty for giving me the opportunity to come to this hall and reminisce the days when I sat amongst the students on those dharis for six odd years with my mind wandering in equal measures the fantasies and apprehensions of life in the real world outside the confines of school. Addressing you today in so many ways is like speaking to a version of myself that notwithstanding the recent ski accident that I've had. So what I tell you today doesn't form a part of my platform introduction or any of my interviews or what you might find available on the net. So let me start by admitting that today is a momentous day for me as well. It's actually the first time that I have been invited on school stage to be recognized for something positive. <laughs> so I was the proverbial backbencher, not particularly accomplished in school, and to compound things and make it worse, nor had any real family business occupation to fall back on. So let me tell you about a couple of defining moments in that journey from those backbenches to where I stand today, a journey which has taken 30 odd years. Now for a moment, For a moment, I am not condoning underachievement in school or taking anything away from everyone who has achieved something, a lot of them who have been called out today. It is necessary to become the best version of yourself in anything that you take up. And those of you who have achieved that already know what it takes and need to employ the same perseverance and focus to succeed in life. But in my experience, there are only two things that will stop you from getting head in the real world. And it's arrogance and complacency. Like one of the wisest people said, stay hungry, stay foolish. But having said that, my journey is perhaps akin to a lot of the people who were not called out tonight, and perhaps who are late bloomers, and will find these attributes later on in life. My journey was much like yours. Like I said, I wasn't terribly good at academics, nor I had a family business or an occupation to fall back on. Although I wish on my final days in school, I pushed myself more. At the end of my journey in school, I found that I got into a college of my choice, but not really a course. But I vividly remember one major learning point in my life. And as this teacher, Professor V.C. Chaudhary used to teach us economics, and he walked into class after our second year exams and he asked us, how many of you students got a first division? And usually the top quartile gets a first division. They raise their hands, beaming with pride. And you know, that was the time startups really had, had happened. The funding from those hands really started. It was the time when multinational companies, banks, etc. were still coming into the country. And he said, you guys are most likely would ri rise to the head of these multinationals, you know, you would be chairman, you would be CEOs, and so on. And then he asked, he said, how many got a second division? Well, that's majority of the class which has a second division in college. You know, that was still a time when it was kind of easy to get into university and college system there. Well, that's majority of the class that raised their hand, and he says, you know, you guys will be the vice president, perhaps, you know, the functional head, the CEOs of the domestic arms of these multinationals. And then he asked how many got a third division. And usually it's that last quartile. And we gingerly raised our hands from the back benches. And he said something very interesting. He said, one or two of you may own the businesses that everybody else will be working in. <laughs> now, it was an audacious remark. But I let it resonate for me. And that remark opened my mind towards possibilities. 
I started to think. I just didn't know how to realize those dreams. Then came I too. Once I graduated from college, and I actually graduated with the third division. And I was pushed to do an MBA. I tried to get into an MBA school. I didn't get into one of any prominence, but I did my MBA nevertheless. And by the time I came back, it was time to get jobs. Some of my friends were joining their family businesses. And like I said, I had meant to join. My friends were getting jobs. Nobody would obviously give me a job given my, my lack of achievements at that point of time. So I had to beg for internships. And I finally got one with the multinational, which was called Arthur Anderson, who was doing a lot of mergers and acquisitions. It was a bit embarrassing at that time because, like I said, most of my friends had permanent jobs, and here I was, uh, you know, an intern. I was actually given a visiting card without a name on top. You know, you have to write your name because uh, after three months you were supposed to leave uh, for the meetings. So one day I was getting frustrated, and a friend of mine gave me a very interesting piece of advice. He said, the only way you will level the playing field for yourself is if you become indispensable. Every transaction, every deal which was done by the organization had something from the top tier of management, middle tier of that management, and then it used to have an errand boy right at the bottom. And he said, if you become indispensable, if you become the most preferred errand boy in the organization, all the deal teams will want you, and that's how you'll get a permanent job. That actually sort of changed my mind and when I thought quite a few things. I actually sort of grabbed that opportunity. You know, I started, you know, I became the best photocopier over there. I was the best coffee maker. I was the best uh, go-to guy within that organization. And before you know it, I was able to sort of uh, get a permanent job. But this is the first time I had actually thought of achieving something and realized it through hard work and perseverance. Something a lot of you have already seen, work towards things and achieve those. But I was, like I said, a little bit of a late bloomer. I realized that a little later in the life. Once I did that, I already had learned the lessons of audacious dreams. But this time, I got the, you know, the ability to actually actualize those through hard work and perseverance. That was really the key to it. And before you go into the next few years, I climbed up the corporate ladder. And at a very young age, I decided to quit. And I actually decided to quit the job that I had so, you know, so sought after. And I did that. I started out, branched out on my own. At that time, I got an opportunity to buy a hospital, which nobody wanted. Now, do keep in mind that at the time, when the hospitals were more self-care platforms were either run by very, very prominent doctors or corporates with very deep pockets. I was neither. So when I got into that business, I looked at, I acquired, I actually was able to, able to acquire a hospital that nobody wanted. Because nobody wanted it, it wasn't very expensive, it was almost free. I basically said, I'll take over the hospital, I will take over the liabilities of the hospital, and I will restructure that. I did that. I did an encore. This was not very long back, this was in 2010. In 2014, I acquired another one. I did an encore. In 2019, I bought all of the Max Cooper hospitals. And what was the back to ask them? Was the so what was the back venture in class then that perhaps the worst performing healthcare chain in the country was able to turn around in the space of three years? Today, on every financial and operating metric, is by far the best in class. It's the company which is valued at 45,000 crores, debt free on the stock exchanges. We employ 25,000 people. And I'm not saying this to gloat. But I'm saying this, you know, because at least in my business, in finance, valuations of companies are a measure of success. It's my way of telling you that it doesn't matter if you haven't realized, if you haven't actualized your true potential till now. It's not late. You can level the playing field going forward. No job is too small or too big. You have to be the rainmaker and the coffee maker no matter what you do. Be humble. Opportunities are infinite. The world is out there, class of 2023. Go out there, get it, everything in it, and I will see you on the other side. Thank you so much for being here.